Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this session with us today about brand activations and success in the metaverse. My name is Pearl Pospiak. I'm a founder of Pearl's Place, which is an immersive online social space and artist incubator. Here with me today is Joel Dietz, co-founder and CEO of an amazing new platform called Meta Metaverse. And thank you for being here today at the Metaverse Spectrum Business Conference, Joel. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Joel has an incredible history with Web3 communities. He's a serial entrepreneur and has been at the forefront of several future tech trends, including blockchain, tokenization, AR, VR, and AI art. He was a founding member of Ethereum. He started the internal Ethereum project, which became the popular MetaMask wallet. He was also the most cited author on Google Scholar on crypto economics, put together some of the largest deals in the asset tokenization space, and is the author of the monograph, Principles of Holonic System Design. His recent projects include programming language for the metaverse and several academic learning projects for MIT, Skoltech, and Notre Dame University, including a textbook style treatment of crypto economics, he also has large literary corpus and has produced several short and long films. So Joel, would you be able to explain what is the meta metaverse and what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, um, you know, we are, you know, the metaverse in general is sort of the digital frontier, you know, for the future of how we interact and the different types of interactions we we can have and sort of native 3D environment or, you know, integrating our minds and 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 all of the future design that we can have about the future of our societies. And we're basically making the platform for you to come in and create your own world, you know, your own society and basically engage, you know, your core fans and, you know, for brands, that's very exciting because, you know, it's another engagement vector for people to have and people feel sort of an additional degree of loyalty when they are able to interact in a, uh, in a compelling game. And it kind of bridges, you know, the worlds of kind of gaming and Web3 and, um, you know, the other types of design and art kind of flavored things that we've seen. So it's a very exciting space to be in. Amazing. So what makes Meta Metaverse different um, from other platforms and what was your mission in creating it? Um, a few things. I mean, one was that, you know, I think that one of the exciting things about the metaverse and gaming world and stuff like that is doing something that is um, beyond what we can do in our ordinary waking daily reality. And so I saw a lot of people going out and, you know, making, you know, digital twins and things like that also cool, but really bring in the high level of kind of engagement and, and kind of pushing the edge of the technology as well, you know, so, um, you know, gamers in general, you know, are very used to saying like, we want to have the best graphics to, you know, most fastest, most streamlined experience, really kind of pushing the edge on what's possible. Um, and so I really wanted to take that and go deep into the technology side of it and say, what are the most exciting kind of um, things that people could possibly build um, and uh, kind of build an audience around that. Um, so for some like very specifically, this involved building our own kind of proprietary kind of math and kind of physics engine that then allows you to do really cool things like basically time traveling inside of a virtual space and then basically being able to come out and change the future and, you know, run different kinds of simulations. So, so stuff that like no one else has really quite, quite done just yet. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So what are some types of user experiences that people can expect um, or that, that people have already built on the platform? Well, we have a, a lot of different, very interesting um, metaverses that people have built out for a variety of reasons. You know, some of them are kind of like art projects, you know, so this like kind of immersive 3D crystal kind of display. Um, we have uh, another one that is um, kind of, you know, there's a couple different ones that are basically simulating different cities. You know, we have a simulated version of Dubai, for example, and it not just has Dubai today, which is cool in and of itself to be able to fly around, but simulating the future traffic patterns of flying cars. If you know something about flying cars, you might know that Dubai just did a demo of like, you know, the flying, you know, flying car kind of from one side of the city to the, the other and are sort of on schedule to deploy flying cars quite soon. Uh, but, you know, people are going to have to simulate, you know, how, how does the traffic evolve and then building these different interaction stuff. So we 
um, by virtue of some of our background, we we do have a deep um, background in, in that area. So, yeah. Wow, amazing. Um, so I was able to peek at the app a little bit and it looks like there's some, you know, mechanics for like coin collecting or a platformer style. So there's a, it's a 3D app, but it has all these different kind of um, game mechanics built into it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's basically a, you know, you get your own world basically and you can populate it with what you want. There is some stuff that you kind of get right out of the box. And then some of the kind of basic kind of Things that you can do is also a question of incentives of how you onboard people into your world because you know one of the things particularly about web3 and crypto is that you can have incentives which often means that people earn basically based on coming and that there's some reason for them to come um and so we have built in a few different layers for that of which one of them is this coin collector thing where basically the first people to come and kind of populate your world can kind of basically get a share of it and basically earn um, on their on the basis of, of joining the experience. Very cool. So there's a lot of different possibilities for brand activations. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how someone would go about doing a brand activation on Meta Metaverse? Yeah, I think the first thing, you know, is doing a little bit of a, a internal audit of what kind of um, 3D assets and things like that you already have. Um, it's always really helpful, you know, when someone comes in and says, okay, I have this, this, and that. The starting point and this kind of vision like i want to have a, a game or a virtual retail experience or whatever else i always encourage people to do something you know and this is but where it really gets the design element and obviously there's great design agencies with it we're always happy to work with people who have that kind of design thing but you know the, the gaming interactivity thing is basically one of the the key you know elements as to whether or not the experience is sticky and something that people kind of come back with oh i did something interesting or you know, I looked and I went in and then I left. So that's uh, the kind of, you know, but we love having those discussions with brands. Um, and, um, and uh, yeah, and the more vision generally the people come in with kind of the better. Um, and some things just lend themselves to that very easily. Like for example, you know, real estate and, um, you know, hotel chains, things like that. It's kind of easy to do like a virtual booking system and give someone like a flyby preview of a particular location and in some ways the more exotic or more unusual thing is kind of the, the more easy it is to just be like hey just make it so people can see this what you have because you have something that's really amazing um and people just don't know that exists they can look on google earth from the sky and be like oh it's a private island but if you can have a you know 3d render of your private island and people can fly by it it's like i don't want to say it's 10 times more like it's probably like a hundred if not a thousand times more likely that they're going to actually come by and you know buy the island or rent the island or whatever it is you want to do um so yeah that's uh, and and the technology is there for that now and we have quite a number of things that we basically already built uh, and integrate that are in this category. And, you know, I would, I would love to do a thousand more, you know. Wow. Awesome. So you're pretty set up to support people in these brand activations if they have assets or what if they don't have anything at all at this time? Yeah. So that, that's the, that's exactly what comes back to. So what is, is available um, and the timeline to basically build something out, which is kind of variable at the moment um, to be frank. And it, it depends on the use case. So like, for physical objects, like say a hotel, right, then we do have um, both ourselves and through various, you know, third-party partners, the technology to 3D scan them and import them, you know, so, um, and, it, and there are some quality considerations and timeline considerations, but generally speaking, we know exactly how to manage a budget for, for importing, you know, existing physical objects and then making the interactive version of those things. Um, and, uh, you know, the, and it is, let's say somewhat medium labor intensive. So there is an effort, you know, in going in there, particularly if you want to do an internal and an external kind of version of it, um, because then you're basically going, you know, room by room um, and uh, and capturing stuff. And, and the more unique and valuable is probably the more the value there is in doing that. Um, and then, you know, the other things are, you know, the kind of broader, you know, experience. But one of the things that we found so far that uh, makes it uh, just kind of, you know, recommendation as well is 
putting the experiences inside of cities, you know, and building the simulation. So someone is exploring a wider environment and then your specific thing is what's highlighted inside of that environment. So mm -hmm. it becomes like the iconic center. Um, and then basically, the, and in fact, if the more other people, and I guess people have probably seen this before with these um, pop-up maps that people used to do of different areas where you get the cartoony versions of the different things, if you know what I'm talking about. So you kind of like blow up a particular thing, but then basically those things become the center of people's attention when they see it. And then, you know, obviously it drives people to visit the physical locations, drive sales, like all that kind of stuff, which is, you know, we're, we're very into that as well. And we love to have the number where you have a very clear, you know, goal as well. That's one, I think one of the problems I'm noticing is that people come in with the idea that they want to do activation, but they don't have the, the goal. And, you know, with like, for instance, hotel chain example, driving people to come stay in the hotel, very tangible. It's sort of, we like to kind of drive towards tangible outcomes as much as possible. And something else that you mentioned that was, was kind of cool was like this idea of an experience being located within a geography on your platform, within like a larger context. So an activation can live alongside another, um, a, a partnering activation within say like a whole city. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about like the metaverse and your sort of infinite cubes? Yeah, that's a great segue actually into this topic. Um, and Dubai is another great example of that because within Dubai, we have several smaller experiences, you know, hotels you can go into, um, private members clubs that you can go into if you have the sort of, you know, access token of that private members club. And the way we're able to do this, uh, you know, goes into kind of a unique design feature that we have that um, no one else really has implemented so far. Um, that I'm aware of, uh, um, and we built you know some proprietary technology around it. But basically, you know the 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 mapping function that is done is that you know spaces are divided into cubes itself not you know necessarily the most amazing thing to do because it, it works just very simply and easily make everything in cubes obviously legos kate lego came up with this idea a long time ago they have a lot of cube like objects you know for as building blocks um, but then once we do that we can subdivide things into smaller cubes so basically if you have a city like you know dubai or new york and then you start developing it basically it's very easy to subdivide the land and then basically resell or lease it um, you know, and then what you can do as well, once you have a subplot, you know, inside of a city, then you can basically put experiences inside one of these smaller cubes that's inside of it. Um, and that just allows you to have basically a, a pretty seamless experience of flying around the city, seeing all the different skyscrapers or something like that, and then zooming in and then basically going into the lobby you know, of the skyscraper. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, maybe we're all inspired at some level by the, the movie Matrix, you know, or you're, whatever you're here. And obviously Unreal Engine 5 is a Matrix experience, but this is actually the, you know, in some ways the fuller version of that even than what exists in the Matrix experience. You can literally go in the lobby and then basically, then there's another experience and you go in the basement, there's another experience. You go up in the elevator, another experience. So we're able to kind of pack these kind of um, I guess density into the world in a way that um, other people don't don't have. Right now. And so, what are the features or things that enable commerce on the meta metaverse? We talked a lot about like how to engage people and what what types of activities, as far as commerce, can they be engaged with? Well, um, you know, you can in, th in theory, you know. 3D scan any kind of object and then basically import them into the, uh, on our platform, you can basically import them directly. Um, and we support uh, some of the most standard, you know, off the shelf, uh, um, uh, basically phone app versions of that, as well as the higher end version of that. So you, know, you can literally go around your apartment and, you know, scan your, I don't know, furniture or something like that, or, you know, cups, and then basically directly import them into, um, you know, your metaverse. And then, you know, if you want, you can basically start selling these things immediately. I mean, or if you have existing three assets, you're a designer and you have that, that version, um, you can do that as well. So the ability to take and license and sell um, basically virtual 3D objects is, um, it's always a huge world that is just starting. I mean, because right now, a lot of this stuff has been kind of locked inside the big games, you know, the triple A games spend, you know, 
millions of dollars on creating their um, their worlds, and, and they're great. I mean, very well designed in general, but um, the assets are kind of locked inside of them. And what this is basically becoming is the whole larger, uh, in some ways much larger, indie designer community that basically anyone can just get up they can literally make something out of paper mache in their home or whatever, you know, their own Lego castle, 3D scan it, upload it, and then basically it becomes, you know, a dynamic world for creating and sharing all these different um, interactions and then, you know, layering different types of functionality on top of that. So I, we're not necessarily the only people doing that. Obviously, Lego has its own uh, metaverse coming soon. I'm very excited to see that one. But um, I think we have one of the absolutely most accessible versions of that. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's 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 huge, you know, because it's basically like this entry point where we've been in this sort of 2D web framework for so long. And now we're starting to, like, bring in these other things. And the the technology for doing it is is very accessible. Yeah. Awesome. So exciting. So can you give us some general examples of like what makes a good activation or a good experience versus, you know, maybe some that have not been as successful? Yeah. Um, well, I think that it requires having some creative people, you know, be involved in the design element of it always, um, you know, that's to kind of set the ambiance and tone, you know, sometimes it's the difference of like, the tune that is playing when you come into the you know virtual museum like is the music well selected or did someone just like you know push a button and say or find you know find the first thing free music you know googling so there's um you know th there is that kind of ambiance setting and kind of design element as i mentioned before um that's partially why we're excited to work alongside you know design agencies or other people who kind of have a a vision um element and, um, you know, it, I guess it really has to kind of re reflect your brand in the similar way of other types of, you know, brand activations as far as the, the way that you want people to kind of come on and receive a kind of impression. Um, unfortunately, um, for many of these activations, and uh, I say there's something to do wrong, it kind of is, like, uh, they're very lo-fi, you know, most of the stuff that's out there right now that is at least accessible. You know, and I actually personally love voxel art and stuff like that, but, you know, it's just a bunch of blocky things. And um, unfortunately for a lot of brands, it's not really the right impression you want to give, as particularly if you're really emphasizing the quality of experience and, you know, luxury assets or whatever else. Um, having the, the higher definition renderings is, is absolutely a must. Um, so that's partially what we focused on that element um, within what we're doing. Uh, and um, so I think that's something to keep in mind as well, like that, you know, it's a similar thing as other words, but the first impression you give will be the one that sticks. Um, and if you can create a certain ambiance, a certain tone, and, a, and as I said before, a kind of level of interactivity where people feel um, kind of rewarded somehow from having gone through the, the effort. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be there. And another thing that's kind of related to that is a sense of identity, you know, like the really good, um, you know, NFT things and stuff like that. They're really creating a community around a particular type of lifestyle, if you want to call it that. There's a lot of physical events and kind of driving stuff too. So um, uh, I do think that that's, you know, uh, there's some questions about some of the business model stuff there, but I do think that that's a part of right now, all of the really successful brands in that, in that arena. Nice. And um, just as a final thought here, as we wrap up, I was um, wondering if someone was interested in doing a brand activation on your platform today, how would they go about getting started? Uh, well, I think Antonio is probably going to jump in here and say something about the thing. He is basically uh, controlling the onboarding process for a lot of the different people we're doing. Uh, so the best thing is probably to go directly to him or through uh, the form that's on our website. Um, and, uh, and then basically there's a, you know, a bit of a, a light onboarding process, um, at the moment, um, it partially depends on the, the scale of what you want to do. Uh, because as I mentioned before, if you have your own 3d assets and you're just ready to go and you just need the environment to basically do that, we have that whole backend built. And, um, a lot of times we can also just take existing 3d assets, um, and make them interactive as well. So we can, we can do that quite easily. Um, but you know, there are other types of engagements, um, that require more, um, yeah, heavy, uh, engagement from the rest of our team. And
And here with me today, we also have Antonio Bilecci, the CMO of Meta Metaverse. Uh, Antonio, uh, thanks for being here today. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. So I have a few questions specifically for you um, related to marketing and analytics and success criteria. So what do you use to actually measure, you know, whether an activation was successful? I mean, I mean, there's there's quite a lot of analytics which are pretty important, especially within the element of the metaverse. I mean, con uh, the content within the metaverse, I think, is very key. Um, the world builds the number of users that are that are um, engaging within these different uh, metaverses within the uh, meta metaverse but more importantly how they use uh, mmv and what they're engaging within the meta metaverse research on these aspects to be fair will help evolve the meta metaverse into something user generated rather than uh, the business itself generating content for the users the users will generate the content for the other users businesses DAOs, and so forth uh, something that is very important as well, and I see that quite a lot of the metaverses will keep this in mind, is the lifetime value versus the cost per acquisition uh, of these, these users coming onto their meta metaverse. Calculating their value based on their lifespan and basically the cost by which the metaverse acquires them. Uh, in general, though, I think the metaverse is going to be a major player in the conversion funnel for each of these brands that come on board, basically. Amazing. And how do you support a brand that wants to do an activation within Meta Metaverse? What's your, you know, what is your team like and how do you actually, you know, build? I mean, we have a team of world builders and designers to cater for basically any Metaverse's needs. I mean, we've had cases where people were interested in building Metaverses for gaming, fashion, real estate, marketing, tourism, education, and and quite a few more. The assets available within the client's metaverse, basically, it can be custom built, pre-made with a combination of different elements within the UE marketplace, or, or uh, as uh, as Joe said, uh, individuals can actually import most of these assets within the meta metaverse themselves with a level of branding. Something that's pretty cool is the sub metaverse play as well, where you can actually build mechanics within the metaverse based on exploration, racing, um, uh, single player, multiplayer, galleries, and so much more. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's quite a lot of entities which prefer the design of one thing that matches the certain brand in another. And each of these metaverses can either be built in-house or they can use our designers or half and half, basically. We provide that in, in, in totality on a case-by-case -case basis. Nice. And so how much does it cost to, you know, do you have land fees or what, what is the cost to build? I mean, currently given our youth, we're only accepting land requests from these early adopters that come on board, or maybe if an individual or business coincides with the vision of the meta metaverse, um, these most of the time end up being granted access. Nevertheless, we're always on the lookout for people, individuals, entities, businesses, DAOs that are interested on building the meta metaverse. I mean, uh, I, I, I'd say if there's anyone here that is quite interested, I do, I would push you guys to get in contact with me or the team, and perhaps we can find a way to work together at the precipice of the next stage of basically virtual universes. <laughs> Amazing. And, and do average users get to use this platform yet? Or, you know, how do I join and just see what we're seeing here when these, in these um, beautiful images, like, am I able to join and just explore? We're like I was saying, we're pretty, we're pretty, we're a pretty young company, but we're currently in the building phase. Like I said, only chosen individuals can access it, but generally people can just go and buy a metaship in theory, declare they have that metaship on our channel, on our Discord channel, and build and explore. The issue is that meta metaship availability is a bit scarce. Uh, we did have a limited release and people are holding on to them quite a bit. But in Q1 of next year,
Hi, everyone. Here we are live with you, the studio audience. <laughs> Anyone would like to ask some questions of us? We have Antonio here. Um, happy to answer anything you want to put in the chat. And Deb has asked, Deborah asked, is there one metaverse outcome that has been surprising for you to see unfold? Hmm. In general. By the way, hi, guys. Uh, one metaverse outcome that was very, very surprising. I mean, in general, one thing that was pretty surprising is the speed at which a lot of big brands out there started utilizing the metaverse uh, for brand activations. Moreover, then that actually building worlds into popular metaverses right now. It's, it's, it's quite funny, though, that um, th there's a lot of talk, especially right now in, in certain media outlets, where, where a lot of these brands jump in and actually uh, jump on the bandwagon. But and they build their world, they market it, and they push it through press releases, media outlets, certain KOLs, and so forth. But then, um, most of the time, they don't build a story behind it. And that's something that, that, uh, that's, that's, that I feel would be the next step with regard to um, uh, the evolution of the metaverse, lore building. I, I was just speaking to a couple of colleagues, and they were very, very interested in building worlds. But uh, apart from building worlds, they want to build, um, uh, they want to build stories behind that world, lore behind it, which I think is the very next step. Generally speaking, how I see it as well with regard to the lore aspect and the, and, and the, and the storytelling aspect, which I feel should be the next step. Um, uh, in my opinion, I feel as if the storytelling aspect should be abundant the second you enter within that specific metaverse or sub-metaverse you enter. Specifically because most of the time, individuals that jump into the metaverse, they don't really know what to do. <laughs> That's something of a pain point, especially from a branding and a storytelling perspective, where an individual jumps into your metaverse and they don't exactly know what they should do next. In my opinion, giving, getting them up to speed on what, can, what they can do and certain missions and goals they can, uh, they can achieve and accomplish within the metaverse should be something that people should look into in the in the short term basically nice so we have another question from sarah eaton says what is meta lambda and how is it connected to meta metaverse hi by the way um so yeah meta lambda is the brainchild of our ceo um joel deets He's quite the programmer himself, and he's building Meta Lambda as the algorithm behind Meta Life, which is in two parts. First part is to use artificial intelligence to develop content within certain metaverses individuals want to build. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are, or some of you have played No Man's Sky. Uh, uh, no Man's Sky utilized an artificially intelligent um, content uh, delivery system through multiple, uh, through their cosmic system and planets, basically, where uh, every time that you drifted across um, no man's sky, you'd find artificially intelligent content, produ uh, produced content within these planets. Uh, so we're doing something on those lines, and we've already built out the artificial intelligent meta lambda algorithm to produce content um, automatically or autonomously in some manner. But there is a second step with regard to meta lambda where we want to build artificially intelligent, for example, let's say creatures or NPCs within these metaverses that basically uh, procreate and and um, live their own their own manner of way within that within that metaverse specifically and the content generated there. Oh. I guess you know Sarah. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions uh, in the audience? Friends, strangers. <laughs> I'd like to hear 
a little more about this lore. Do you want to tell us a little bit about storytelling and, and why, you know, why is that an important part of a metaverse strategy? In general, guys, and and uh, obviously this is this is a metaverse uh, conference. How many times, or at least the first times you jumped into a metaverse, have you gotten stuck or you met up with your friend and you're like, hey, listen, let's go north. There's a, there's some sort of dragon there. Let's jump on the dragon. Spend 15 minutes and go, hey, uh, yeah, I think I think we should just buzz off now. In my opinion, the next stage, as I was saying saying previously would be some sort of let's say campaign mission that you're dropped into merging the element of gaming and the metaverse in one where the individual has the choice to follow a certain role that they want to build out or they also could be um choosing certain different roles based on time-based activities in those in those metaverses for example let's say let's say a, a, um, a shoe brand or let's say a research brand decides to put together some sort of focus group and invites individuals to come to their uh, land or to their metaverse to take part in this focus group, specifically focused on automobiles, for example. A prompt will be shown to the individuals within, within um, that metaverse and even through their CRM inbuilt within that metaverse to get in contact with individuals to jump into the metaverse and take part in this focus group or research-based project. Once they accomplish this research-based project, then they can achieve certain tokens, NFTs, POAPs, for example, that they can utilize um, either in, in the metaverse, throughout other metaverses, or even in the real world. In my opinion, I think that's something that... Uh, should be focused on primarily because utilizing certain crm based systems and and engaging with audiences within the metaverse would be would be pretty important especially in this day and age and um i'm i'm seeing a chat message that's being sent to everybody but i'm not sure that it's directed at our stage from Tim Bogert. So um, I'm going to leave that one on the main chat. And if Tim, if you are listening and you would like to uh, ask that on our stage, if that was intended for our stage, then please do. Um, otherwise, I think we are about out of time. And uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you, Antonio, for being here today. And we'll see you Fantastic. all soon in the metaverse. Fantastic. If any of you um, would like to get in touch and learn more about what we're building, please do get in touch with me. You can find me anywhere. Do you want to leave your uh, email or anything in the chat here, Antonio? Sure. sure. I think Maybe we had a slide. Right there, yeah, just go ahead and leave that in the chat. And uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for hosting us. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers.